Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bolts from the Bible. <clears throat> Thursday, April 1st today. April Fool's Day, so watch out. It's, it's a day of dumb. Good morning, Greg. Hey, Dan. Why are you so quiet? That's why. Okay. Remember, Daniel, it's a day of dumb. April Fool's Day. Yep. Watch out for that. Yep. <laughs> Halbit Horns and Guns, welcome. Good morning, Farmbo. How are you guys today? Um, this week we've been talking about things that help your shooting. Um, this one, this one we're going to talk about today is one that I'm pretty passionate about because this is what I've chosen to be. What I have decided that my life's work is, is to be a worthy mentor. And one of the easiest and fastest ways to propel yourself forward as a student of the discipline is to choose a mentor. Find someone that you can trust that has demonstrated that they have a lot of experience and allow them to help you. That is a very, very quick way to meet your goals as a shooter much quicker. The saying goes, and this is a very important saying, something that I, I think about quite often. You don't know, and more importantly, you can't know what you don't know. So if you don't have the experience that's been driven by countless questions that you've had to go and search and find the answers and then prove those theories, prove the answers correct through actual practical application, if you haven't gained a tremendous amount of experience, then there's certain things that will not be revealed to you. It's, it's kind of strange in the way that the world works that way. It's almost like we don't get to have the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, unless we've demonstrated that we're worthy of it. Requires work to get there, always. That's right. So it's an interesting thing to think about that way, though, isn't it, Daniel? Because yeah. in order to be worthy, we have to have demonstrated that we are. And so it's our pursuit of that thing that reveals the questions that we're supposed to ask. And then our work on those questions reveals the answers and the truth. So... The reason that it's so important that you find a mentor, the reason it's so important that you find someone that you trust that has de demonstrated a, a, a gigantic amount of experience is because they can direct you to questions that you haven't even thought of. They can point out realities that you do not realize. And that's how we grow really, really fast. Because without that, we're left to our own timelines. We only have so much time in the day. A lot of shooters are not full-time shooters like I am. They have jobs doing other things. And so they cannot, they cannot spend the kind of time to pursue it and have those questions revealed to them. Yeah, yeah. don't ignore what you think when you wake up in the middle of the night. It's there for a reason. Every time. Every time it's there for a reason. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, divine providence. It's everywhere if you, if you care to look for it. Yeah. Um, when you don't know what you don't know, a mentor is is the thing that can help you because once you get to a certain place and 
you're pursuing this discipline and, and you're working your way through all of your different uh, aspects and you're chasing down this variable and that variable. If you have someone that's demonstrated that they're worthy of trust and they've already walked down that path, they can direct you right to the very end. They can pick you up off that path, stick you forward on the, on the end of it and say, okay, start from here. All that back there is known already. Well, right? and the goal being to try all of that and then stand on their shoulders and reach just a little bit higher than they have. That's right. That's, that's the ultimate goal is, is everything can't be learned absolutely new by every single person. There's just not enough time. There isn't. But you can take what has already been learned by somebody else and use that to further the knowledge as far as what anybody has. More importantly, I can tell you, as someone that takes this all very personally, I've, I've had a, a very personal interest in being a successful mentor. And there's nothing that makes me happier than seeing someone that I've mentored right. succeed me. Take a step do, further, yeah. Do better than I'm doing. Figure something out that I don't know. Um, there's no more happy days in my life than when I see that. Right. So, Daniel, you have a lot of firsthand experience with this. Our relationship and the way that we became friends is extraordinarily unique. And I'd like for you to talk <laughs> for a minute about what it is like from the other side of the equation. What it is like when you go from not having a mentor to having a mentor and what it can do for, for the people listening. Well, initially I got started in long range shooting because I, I have a good place to shoot. I have where I can shoot some distance and I was interested in it and thinking, well, this will, this will be a fun project. And I immediately go out and buy what I thought was what I was supposed to have Remington 700. That's what everybody buys. That's where everyone starts out basically. And it didn't take long to realize that it, I was not accomplishing my goals. I was having a lot more difficulty with it than what everybody online said I was supposed to have. And so I started reading and started studying and eventually came across Greg. And it wasn't a, it wasn't an easy encounter for our first few times. Um, it was, it was being told that my equipment that I had wasn't going to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. And, and and it was, it was expensive equipment, what I considered quite expensive equipment. And I just spent all this money. And then somebody tells me this isn't going to work. It's like, no, that's not, that's not true. But so I went out there and I tried to accomplish it with what I had and it didn't work. So eventually Greg and I became pretty good friends after many, many, many long phone conversations of how to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. And he was working with me before I ever had good equipment and trying to help that equipment that I had be better. And it just got to the point where it wasn't accomplishing it. And so Greg has helped me further my shooting abilities um, 10 times over just by the direction and the teaching and the, the try this and try this. And, and, and sometimes it's, well, what you're doing is not working. Maybe go a different direction, go this direction. And it's, it's all stuff that he's done before. It's all stuff that he's been to the bottom of that barrel on and just trying to find what's going to work in my situation for my gun and, and, and such like. Do you feel like, do you feel like you could have moved along as quickly if you didn't have someone to kind of guide you? I could have gotten where I am without your help. It would have taken hundreds of thousands of rounds and it would have taken 10 plus years of, daily working on this for round after round and barrel after barrel. I could not have gotten there as quickly without some help and without some direction and without positive direction. Not There's all kinds of direction out there, but it has to be from somebody that's been there. If it's not from somebody that's been there, it doesn't, it doesn't serve any purpose. It doesn't help. So how did, how did you go about that? Because that's probably the number one problem that I see is, is even amongst people that are trying to choose a mentor, they don't know how to pick one because if you go and try to find one, it can be really difficult. How do you know who to trust? That, that's the hard part. That's the hard part is finding somebody that you trust really knows what they're doing. Um, obviously we've been friends long enough. I've been around you. I've watched you make some absolutely amazing shots. Um, 
what solidified it in my mind was when we were in class and we were laying down a thousand yard shooting and we're shooting and hitting that plate and hitting that plate and hitting that plate. You're carrying on a conversation in the background. All of a sudden you say, just a minute. That you missed the left that time, didn't you? And they said, yeah. And you said, yeah, the wind just changed. You didn't catch it, did you? And then you lay down behind, what was it? A little 6BR or something, something 16 inch barrel, a little short rifle. And you start hitting the plate while we're all trying to figure out the swirling wind that has all just changed. And so I come to the realization he's been here, he's seen this, he's done it, and he's done it enough times that he's absolutely confident that when he pulls the trigger, he's going to hit that target. And that's when I realized, fully realized that, yeah, just listen to what he says and, and take it and it's going to help. It's, so you had the benefit of firsthand experience. A lot of people don't get that. Right. A lot of people, they don't have some place that they can go and shoot sure. with something. If you don't have first-hand experience, you've got to try what you're told. And it's going to take a little more time than without first-hand experience. But, and, and I got some of it that way from you because you said, try this, and I would go try it. And either it worked or it didn't, and it worked. And so if somebody is trying to mentor you and trying to help you, and they say, go try this, go try it. Try it, work it, go to the end of the, end of the road that they've given you. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, um, very politely find a different mentor. <laughs> Well, that's, that's the part of this that I wanted to get. It's because it's a question that I get a lot. It's like, how do I know who to trust? You know, this guy over here is saying this. Frankly, you can find a whole bunch of people in the industry that will say the exact opposite thing that I would say. Yeah. Right? They would have you do something wholly entirely different than what I would say. And so what Daniel just said is exactly how you go about vetting your mentor you have to be willing to apply the things that are being said. You can't look at a, an answer that somebody gives you, even from me, as a, a certainty. Even with a mentor, it takes work. That's right. It just takes a little bit less work because you don't have to try absolutely everything. You just try what they said. You can you prove. Can In other words, you can prove whether or not your mentor knows what he's talking about. Right. If your mentor constantly is having you do things and it just really isn't working out, you're not getting the experiences that you want to have, you're not getting the results that you'd like to see, then either they're really bad at explaining it or they don't know what they're talking about. And both are bad. Right. Okay. So, whether or not somebody is able to get you to propel forward, that's the job of a mentor. Anybody that takes it seriously. Now, me personally, I have made this my life's work. The most important, I'm, I'm very happy every time I sell a piece of equipment. I'm very happy every time I can um, offer somebody a tangible thing that's going to help move them forward because equipment moves people forward as well. I mean, Daniel, you were, you were shooting and shooting and shooting and you, you kind of ran into a wall and I'm like, okay, man, um, you're kind of, you're really rubbing up against the capabilities of your hardware here. You need new hardware. You get new hardware and it's like magical years and move on. Yeah. It's like yeah. magical light switch. You went from where you were and you took a massive leap forward in downrange performance just by having a custom rifle. And but one thing to understand is that a guy with 10 custom rifles in his safe, that does not make him a mentor. That makes him a 10 custom rifle owner. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so sometimes sometimes you, you see people talking on forums or you, you see people at the range and they have the best of the best equipment and that's great, but they haven't tried it. They hadn't been to the end of the rabbit hole of what it's capable of and what it's going to accomplish. And, and so while they're willing to spend the money and have done so, that doesn't mean that they are a capable mentor. Well, and false authority, you got to watch out for people taking a mentorship role when they're not even qualified to be a student. Right. They're, they're not a true student of the discipline. So how could they have moved past that into being a teacher? Yeah, the Bible describes as the blind leading the blind and they're both going to fall in the ditch. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So it's easy to commit to a certain level of, of experience. It's easy to commit and say, 
okay, so this guy's telling me this stuff, right? You can go ahead and interview your mentor. You can contact them. You can say, um, have some very pointed, very deep conversations with them. See what they know. Can they demonstrate? That. Very revealing. Yeah. Do, can they demonstrate that they have experience? Can they demonstrate that they have worked with the thing that you're talking about? Right. Um, a mentor does not have to necessarily be. Right? When you think of singular, in the traditional sense of a mentor, you're thinking of like, a monumental expert, somebody that's really, really, really experienced and has demonstrated that across a long period of time. You can learn something from anybody. Right. The mechanism to vet and, and proof your mentor is the same as it is when you just read something on the internet. Well, um, each person may be, they may have a piece of knowledge in one specific small area that you don't have. And the, and the trick is finding that one specific area and then using that knowledge and putting it into, into a group of knowledge so that you can grow as a whole. There you go. They don't have to be a mentor in every single area. The difference between those little bits of knowledge and a traditional mentor, like what I consider myself to be, what I've chosen as my life's discipline, is that a mentor is gonna have a lot of experience with a lot of different things. Like I, I've loaded for a lot of different cartridges. I have a, a lot of experience with a lot of equipment and a lot of different situations, right? So it, a, kind of a, a more broad uh, scope of experience. However, the little bits of knowledge that you pick up, they have the same capabilities as a mentor does, meaning that interpreted wrongly they can hurt you vetted out and proofed through your own application and finding out whether or not that thing is actually true can help you a mentor can do the same thing um, i've had the unfortunate the unfortunate opportunity on several occasions to see a mentor that i viewed to be very detrimental to their students welfare that were teaching things that were in extremely old, um, teaching things that just don't have a practical application in today's shooting. They're not modern, they're not current. This is especially true of guys that have old school military sniper training uh, and they're unwilling to break from the training that they received in the military 40 years ago uh, and, and come into today's world. Um, guys that would recommend mill reticle ranging as your primary source of getting a range to target. That's a perfect example that I've witnessed a few times um, in, a, in an yeah, era where you get prairie fine. dogs fast. Yeah, you can get prairie dogs about 300 yards with that and beyond that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're lucky. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's examples of this all over the place, but the danger is the same, right? It's, uh, it's, it's the same danger that everybody faces when you go looking on a forum for advice. There's a certain satisfaction that comes along with having meaningful personal relationships. And that's the core that I've built Primal Rights around. That's the core of what my business is built around, is meaningful personal relationships. I don't have any desires or inclination to sell something to everybody on the face of the planet. I'm not that guy. Right. If I don't get along with someone, I will not sell them something out of spite. Now that's, that's a personal failing of my own that Daniel and I have been working on over the years, but I feel very strongly about this. If I don't click with someone, I don't want to do business with you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to be around you. Um, and, so in that, there is a tremendous amount of personal satisfaction to be gained for the mentor as well as the student. Because when I get done having a meaningful conversation with someone and I've instructed them on some very heavy, pointed, specific information, they go out then after we talk and they do the thing and then they call me back later sometime in the future and say, hey, I tried that thing. It was amazing. That worked really well. There's literally nothing that gives me that feeling of accomplishment as I get when I 
have positively impacted someone else. Now this works the other way as well. Daniel, what feelings have you been able to experience as a result of having a mentor that you can count on to help you with things? Actually finding success in a relatively quick fashion. Um, one specific one I can think of is, is when we started working on, I say we, because we work on it together, even though we're how far apart, but the 22 Creed barrel, it, when we first started shooting it, it wasn't quite shooting as fast as what it should have shot. And, and we went through several different processes in finding that out. And if I'd had to do that on my own, the barrel would have been shot out long before I figured out what was going on with it. But it took you sitting down and saying, okay, buy this powder, this powder, this powder, this powder, and try each of them. And at the end of that road, there's, there's the answer. It was one of those powders that you suggested. Right. And very, very satisfactory and also saves time, saves money saves equipment it just because you've been down that road and you can help me down that road right well and subsequently um you find that when when you're able to count on someone in that way it makes you feel really safe makes you feel really secure in your decision making process when you can bounce something off of someone now i have mentors as well right Travis Stevens at TS Customs, he's a mentor of mine. Daniel, you're a mentor of mine. I want to know something about Cerakote. I call Daniel. <laughs> if I want to know something about some very specific machining, some, some, if I want, like, I bounce, uh, we're coming out with some new products here shortly, and I, I bounce those ideas off of Travis frequently mm -hmm. because he's got a very, very intelligent, very sharp mechanical intellect. And we all have we all have aspects that we're more expert in than others, or we more more experienced in than others. Um, you're extremely expert in rifle shooting. You're extremely expert in reloading. Um, I'm not about to ask you about what you would recommend on progressive reloading. You don't have the <laughs> advice you want on to that. About a Dylan 1050 or something. I'm not that guy, am I? <laughs> You don't have that experience. And to no. give that advice would be leading somebody in a direction that might or might not be right. Right, exactly. So it, it's not as if um, you have to take the student's role in every aspect of your life. There's more than likely some area of your life where you are also, you have the capability to be a mentor. Right. Learning how to be a proper student in the disciplines that you are weak in or would like to improve in, learning how to be a proper student can help you be a massively successful mentor in the things that you are expert level in. And so the skill set of how to behave with your mentor is a very important thing to develop. Because if you learn how that mechanism works, then your capability of being a mentor yourself will be enhanced. And it's, it's basically a, a byproduct. And you can start by being a student and then later become a mentor. But there has to be an element of truth in all things. And so you can be a mentor in everything that you're strong in, right? Whatever your chosen discipline is. If I ask you, who are you? We had an episode uh, of Bullets from the Bible that specifically asked that. Who are you? Mm -hmm. Would you decide who you are and <laughs> and start pursuing that thing? You know, so whatever defines you, you in theory have the capability to be a mentor in that thing. Whatever it is that defines you, whatever you've decided that your life's pursuit is going to be. If you don't even know what that is, I'd start there. <laughs> You, yep. you, you really need to start deciding because your life can't go positively if you haven't decided what you want to do. Right. Um, so learning how to be a proper student, learning how to ask the questions and gaining a lot of experience in asking an expert, asking per people that you trust and getting those answers. The act of doing that will teach you about the kinds of questions and the way that they're going to be formulated from the mentorship side. So whatever thing that you're an expert on and whatever you have the capacity to teach others about, both sides of the relationship work. They work for you and they, they accomplish the same thing. 
whether I'm having a conversation with one of my mentors about something that I trust their opinion on, it always propels me forward very drastically. In the case of, in there, I'm a student, right? In that, in that instance, I'm a student. So I'm getting propelled forward drastically. On the other side of the equation, when I'm in a mentorship capacity, when someone's asking of my expertise, I still get propelled forward because there's inevitably instances where they ask me a question and I might not have the cleanest, most concise way of answering the question. I might, have, might, might, might not have the right analogies. I might not have the right things. It's, uh, I think it's a quote by Einstein. If you can't explain something simply, you don't understand it well enough. So I view that as a challenge. And in the mentorship capacity, what allows me to grow the fastest is my interface with my students. Right, yeah. Because if I wasn't being challenged in that capacity, then I simply don't, I'm not going to have a drive and a desire to understand it to that higher, more elevated degree that would allow me to explain it to the simplest possible, most boiled down element. I should be able to explain it to anyone at any point in their journey. Uh, Daniel, we've had some super high level discussions in the past about some extraordinarily complex interior and exterior ballistics stuff. Did you ever feel like I wasn't explaining it well enough? No, no, you're very, very good at articulating and explaining things. That just means you weren't asking me hard enough questions. Uh, well, <laughs> when we got when we got in those level of conversation, I sometimes didn't know what to ask. I'm just listening, just soaking it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one key with mentoring is they don't have to view you as a mentor in order for you to be a mentor. And that, that, that can sometimes be difficult if you are very good at handling how you tell them things and stuff. They may never view you as a mentor, but you might be able to steer their life in a completely different direction or their, their outcome in a completely different direction. Uh, Galatians. Wrong page. Anyway, Galatians chapter 6, 1 and 2, he says, Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. He says, If you see someone in sin, you see somebody doing something wrong, you steer them back considering yourself so you don't go in that same direction and bear one another's burdens. Um, if we see somebody going the wrong direction, we have the opportunity to stand by and watch them crash and fail, or we have the opportunity to be a mentor. Now, they don't have to view us as a mentor for us to help them and steer them back in the right direction. It, all it takes is us being willing to help bear their burdens, to help, help get them going in the right direction, and realizing we may someday be the one going in the wrong direction. We may someday be the one that doesn't even realize we're going down this train wreck of a road, and hopefully somebody will be there to help steer us back, too. It, 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 it applies to everything. Thank you for joining us for Bullets from the Bible. We'll see you tomorrow.